the most recognizable feature about a string player is the vibrato, perhaps even more than the sound itself. Vibrato should be as creative as bow strokes. Very tiring to listen to the same vibrato that's applied in the same way in every phrase, in every movement. Hi everybody, this is Daniel Leltik, the lead of cello content here at Tone Bass. In this video, we're going to explore that all important aspect of string playing, its vibrato, through lessons and examples from cellists Susan Moses, Sarah Santambrogio, Daniel Lalchuk, Natalie Klein, and Clive Greensmith were going to explore the mechanics, the physical apparatus that controls the oscillation of the left hand, fingers, and arm that we call vibrato, and much more importantly, the application of that to artistic examples, to examples from the repertoire, to find our artistic voice, add the musical richness of the phrases we're playing, and explore different ways of practicing this all-important expressive aspect that defines string playing perhaps more than anything else. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Now I'll speak just a little, even at this point, about vibrato, because these rolling exercises really come into play when you're teaching vibrato, which can be a very difficult concept for a younger player or any of us at any point in our playing, to really having variety in the vibrato is difficult. So I love very much my colleague Steve Doan's approach that he has in this wonderful book where you go, um, you roll into the fourth finger first. roll around from one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. Then you go um, and I do uh, and I want you to really free your arms when you get to this point and relax your thumb. Don't keep your thumb gripped behind the neck, but free. Um, I try to keep always the hand shape when we're doing this, but release the thumb, release the, fr the thumb, okay? And then when you're going to... Two is probably the strongest figure we have on the cello. So when you're picking fingerings for singing passages. Try to find ways to use your second finger more often than you might think, just because you'll get your best sound using your second finger. And then when you go back to the first finger, Aldo Parizzo, who's one of my wonderful teachers, would talk about throwing the elbow back up. <laughs> You have to feel that you're vibrating from under the note. I want you to play a C major scale, just two octaves, one note to a bow, vibrating. Okay, so. did your thumb touch the back of the neck? Think about it. If it touched more than four times, you're ending up doing a wrist vibrato, not an arm vibrato. The only time when you're vibrating that the thumb touches the back of the neck is when you're on an open string or if you're shifting and you lightly touch it. It's your anchor. But if your finger is on the string and you're vibrating, you don't need the thumb to touch the back because you're anchored with your left hand finger. And if you're doing, let's say, so, if I have my thumb on the back of the neck, I'm now having to do a wrist vibrato, which is what violinists do. C 
see how weak that sounds? It hurts, actually. It hurts my hand to do that. Uh, now, with the, uh, we're so lucky to have this arm vibrato because it gives us an amazing uh, power and strength in a vibrato, but also gives us so many different ways to vibrate. I sometimes ask students when, that, when their, their vibrato sounds a little bit monocolor, how they think of vibrato slowly, and most of the time, the students say that they think of it from the wrist. They think of a vibrato that moves. And uh, my answer is yes, but not just. I think that vibrato is three actions. This is where I am with vibrato at the moment anyway. I'm also always developing my ideas, but I think it's this, which I call the turning of the round doorknob, the wrist movement, but it's also a combination together with the cleaning of the fingerboard, as though there's something dirty on the fingerboard that I want to clean off, number two. And number three, which I find fascinating, is the flexibility of the knuckle. When they slow, slowed Heifetz's hand down to look at his vibrato, there was a huge amount of knuckle movement with his left hand, and I'm sure that this flexibility is what creates, finally, the very beautiful sound. If you look at every great string player, they have more or less this flexibility in this final knuckle. So they're all can you can practice this one, that movement, that movement, this movement, where the knuckle is very, very flexible. But there's an important aspect, I think, to intonation and vibrato and where they join together. A mistake, I believe, is to go over the note when you vibrate. Now, you can see I'm modulating the vibrato, but I'm also trying to keep it calm and even. And this comes from the individualistic work on the different fingers. Here, I feel the fingers are really supple and flexible and not too strong. I feel they're, they're not pressing down on the fingerboard. I don't like this pressing thing, especially not if we're playing a legato singing passage. I like the feeling of sort of just hanging. I, I like to hang with nice low low elbow. Not a, I, this is not sort of conducive to this kind of playing. It's very difficult. Not good. Not good. Tense and also not free. You hear the difference in sound instantly. Now, it's the little notes oftentimes that we don't vibrate that we should, or at least that we should have the possibility of vibrating. This is why, again, I want you to go back and practice all different tempos, all different styles of vibrato with the metronome, because when we come to a triplet like... You see, what if I want to vibrate all three notes of the triplet? I'm not necessarily saying I want to or I have to. But if there comes a day when I say to myself, Daniel, I really want to vibrate all three notes of that triplet on the fourth beat there, and I haven't done the requisite practice of preparing the fingers to do so, I won't have the possibility of doing so, so my idea will be for naught. No difference in the quality between each finger. at all. So a relaxed and free vibrato is obviously desirable for all string players and vocalists. It's uh, important to try to be able to make your vibrato um, amplify the sound that you already have with, with the right hand. And we all know that in a hall, a great singer, the sound is carried by the, by the vibrato. And it's the same with string playing. Um, 
but we can't get tied up in knots trying to play um, with with the with with the vibrato. So there are some exercises you can do to to free yourself up. Um, what, as a teacher, one of the hardest things to correct is when vibrato hasn't been learned correctly, um, and if there's tension there. Because think of the how many oscillations a day you know, do an hour or two of practice how much you're ingraining about a possible potential bad habit. So again, you should be able to play without vibrato. And so start by playing non-vibrato. And then we add the vibrato. Basically for me, it starts in the finger and it is a part of the forearm action. And that comes from this movement here. We talked about this here in the right hand opening here, this hinge. It's the same with the left hand. If I do this, you see this is the shifting that we do is very much related to the vibrato.